The video contains visual elements that might shock you. Everyone knows what happens later. What made this scene so impactful? The use of blood in Godfather truly changed the way violence was depicted on screen. What kind of blood was used in this scene? How did it change cinema forever? Let's take a deep dive and find out about the journey of fake blood in film. Before fake blood was used in movies, it was used in a 19th century French theater called the Grand Guignol. The Grand Guignol became famous for including shocking bloody sequences in its plays. The blood's red pigment was made by boiling dried insects called the cochineal bug. The fake blood was so convincing that that would always be an audience member who fainted during the plays. The variations on Grand Guignol's fake blood formula started to be used in early silent era films. Initially in silent cinema, there were a few avant-garde filmmakers who dared to explore the impact of on-screen violence. In Hollywood films, little to no blood was shown on screen. This was because of a censorship known as the Hayes Code. However, few filmmakers started to bypass this censorship. They started using chocolate syrup as fake blood for their black and white films. The best example is Alfred Hitchcock using Bosco chocolate syrup as blood for the iconic Psycho shower scene. But chocolate syrup couldn't be used as blood in color cinema. So different blood formulae started to be developed for fake blood. During this time, a physician called John Tyndale developed a blood formula that became really popular in the late 50s. It was called the Kensington Gore. The Kensington Gore was famously used by Stanley Kubrick in The Shining. Before Kensington Gore, filmmakers used different kinds of blood that almost seemed cartoonish at times. Look at the difference in blood after the advent of Kensington Gore. Why was such cartoonish blood used? The reason is the invention of television. For films to be aired on television, cinematic blood had to look different from actual blood to avoid shocking the audiences. This led the bloody horror films to be pushed outside mainstream cinema. This resulted in the rise of many new subgenres like the giallo films, slashers, Ramsey films, zombie films, and so on. These genres used massive amounts of blood in different types of colors. Due to the rise of these subgenres, the demand for fake blood increased. In Hollywood, films like The Wild Bunch and Bonnie and Clyde pushed the boundaries of on-screen violence. This led to the creation of Dick Smith's blood formula in the 70s. It became the standard blood formula in Hollywood. Dick Smith's blood was famously used in The Godfather, The Exorcist and The Taxi Driver. The blood looked so real in The Taxi Driver's climax scene that the censors asked Scorsese to darken the blood for the movie to not get an X rating. The speciality of Dick Smith's recipe was that it soaked into the fabric like real blood. The variations on Dick Smith's blood formula were the standard for Hollywood movies for almost three decades. But fake blood involved a lot of stickiness along with the constant change of prosthetics. This was solved with the arrival of CGI fake blood. CGI blood was used to good effect in the Zodiac and Public Enemies. But low quality CGI blood immediately loses the audience as the film loses its touch of reality. Fake blood has evolved by absorbing the various social changes around it. From silent cinema to talkies, black and white to color, practical blood to CGI, what do you think is the best blood used in films? <laughs>